Hey dudes, happy Tuesday morning. A little bit of housekeeping before I start this video proper. A few people have reported that comments have disappeared off some videos. And indeed they have. Um, some videos that are completely innocuous, that are monetized, and the comments that YouTube is deleting are fine. What it's doing is it's putting it into a secret folder that only I and the moderators can see called potentially inappropriate. So there's literally hundreds of comments on certain videos that have been deemed potentially inappropriate. So I'm having to go down and manually add them back. So that's gonna take, that's gonna take a while uh so i don't know whether it's a, a glitch or youtube is got has got some kind of problem with censorship i have no idea what's going on most possibly a glitch but bear with me on that guys so in this video i want to address a couple of comments that have come up on my recent covid19 video the one that says china to permanently ban uh, wild animal markets. As with the other COVID-19 videos and the Jordan Peterson video on depression have been deemed not suitable for most advertisers and audiences. So I don't know why but that's the first comment I want to address that somebody said what's YouTube's problem with the coronavirus and I haven't been even naming the virus because I was thinking that the, it was the name that the algorithm was picking up, but I didn't name the virus in the China video and it's been deemed potentially inappropriate for advertisers. So I don't know. So I'm not even going to try to get this video monetized or any other videos monetized that are about the virus. I am going to be making some more videos about the virus, even if, you know, this channel is a vegan channel and it, it kind of seems off topic. I think it's important and I am going to make some videos, whether people watch or not, whether I get any money from them or not, I'm still going to make the videos. But to that comment, why is YouTube doing this with coronavirus videos? I can only assume it's because there's all sorts of conspiracy theories and stuff going around and it's just lumping, you know, ones that are like, like from Dr. John Campbell, ones that are perfectly factual, they're all evidence based. It's lumping them all together and it's just demonetizing them. I've watched a lot of COVID-19 videos and I don't see ads on them. So it's not just mine. It seems to be them all, which is a shame, but such is YouTube. So before I address the more substantial comment, quick look at the numbers as of about 6am my time this morning, 3rd of March, nearly 91,000 overall cases in the world, 40 of those are in the UK, which has jumped from 13 in three days, so it's like tripled in three days. Lots of deaths now, but lots of people recovered, so that's very good news. Right, so the comment was, why should we be more alarmed by COVID-19 than by regular flu? And yeah, at the moment in countries like mine where there's only, you know, 40 cases, it seems that we shouldn't be alarmed. And a lot of people have taken that stance, you know, it's something that's abroad. If you've never been to China, you don't know anyone from China, I can understand why that would be your point of view. Um, certainly in Europe, the European Union, of which Britain is no longer a part, but still, <laughs> um, they've risen now the risk to high instead of moderate. But still, you know, that's just a, a government thing. Why should the public be alarmed at all when cases in most countries, such as mine, are still very small? 
there's been some evidence that people are panic buying or at least uh, uh, supermarkets are gearing up for people panic buying and I can understand that as well why supermarkets would want to kind of be aware of it and get things in stock and stuff but to the comment so why should we be more alarmed by this than by regular seasonal flu regular seasonal flus come every year and we have got some herd immunity to that what i mean by that is lots of people are already immune so even if they come into contact with a flu virus they won't get it because they've already got immunity to it it's only when there's a, a, a mutation and there's a new strain that you see an outbreak such as the 2009 swine flu there was a mutation i believe or something and that's why lots of people got it so with this virus it's completely novel, no one has immunity to it, therefore there's no herd immunity. So that's the first issue as to why we should be more alarmed because it's going to spread more quickly. There's also evidence, if you check out what uh, Dr John Campbell's been talking about, there's, there's evidence actually that even if there was you know, herd immunity, the COVID-19 virus is more infectious than flu period. So at the moment the rate of spread um, is between 2.6 and 3.6, something something along those lines. It's called the R0 figure. So what that basically means is for every one person infected by COVID-19, between two and four people are going to be infected by them. They are going to affect between two and four people. Flu only has a R naught of about 1.2 or 1.3. So just looking at statistically, the infection rate is higher with COVID-19, but that could be because of the lack of herd immunity. But there's more. It's now becoming a little bit evident some, some evidence suggests that COVID-19, the virus itself, is hardier than flu, than the influenza virus, in that it can live longer on surfaces. Um, I've seen figures of you know, hours to even days that it can live on surfaces, especially in cold conditions. Um, and also, there's the possibility that it's airborne, so flu, um, is droplet infection so when someone sneezes or coughs the droplets go into the air but with COVID-19 perhaps it can spread beyond the, the the space that droplets could take so a wind could blow it not a wind couldn't blow it miles but it might blow it down a corridor if there was a draft right so it's a hardier virus potentially which again makes it more infectious because there's more chance that people are going to come into contact with it so that de 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 um, teamed with the um, the lack of herd immunity creates an issue the other thing that makes it more alarming is that the death rate appears to be higher so it appears to be either those who are immune compromised or elderly people, older people, um, are the most likely people to die from COVID-19. The figures are speculative because we won't know the true death rate until all of this thing is over because obviously there's a lag between the confirmed cases and the people who are eventually going to die. But it's looking like, depends on what country's figures you look at, but it looks like the death rate is 2 to 3%. Not exclusively, but most likely elderly people and those that are immune compromised. The good thing, unlike flu, the good thing is that children appear to be not seriously affected at all. With flu, young children are very prone to it, but actually with this, that's, there's very, very few children have been serious cases, so that's great. Um, but for those people who are older in the community and you know they are um, maybe immune compromised as well, they maybe have got um, chest conditions like COPD or whatever, um, they're going to become the serious cases. But because there's a glut of serious cases all at once, 
there's no um, health service, certainly our National Health Service in the UK, could not cope with a glut of cases all at once. Um, you know, we're in flu season to start with, so there are people who do die of flu every year, who become seriously ill with complications from flu, and the National Health Service, as well as maybe your health service, are dealing with those things, add COVID-19 cases on top of that, and um, already stretched health services are going to really, really struggle, and that is why um, containment measures have to be put in place. And the next video that I'm going to do on this is going to be about containment measures. But I'm going to leave it there for today because I've got loads to do. I've got a backlog of work because I spent so long doing that BART video yesterday. I've got a backlog of work and uh, I'm still on jury service so I'm calling it here. Um, if you're new to the channel, if this is the first video that you've seen on my channel. Um, I don't normally do viral videos, viral videos. Um, I'm a vegan channel, but please do check out my other videos and subscribe if you want to stick around. Bye.